NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating and Air, Flood and Restoration. We know how. A fall from grace. The rabbi shot and injured during last year's attack on Habad of Poway pleads guilty to federal charges of tax and wire fraud. Prosecutors say he used his position to cheat the system and keep thousands of dollars for himself. Thank you for joining us for the nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. When the shooting happened, Rabbi Israel Goldstein was already being investigated by the IRS and FBI. Here's how the scheme worked. Donors would make large contributions to Habad and Poway, but then secretly get most of the money back. Goldstein would keep a portion of that contribution, then funnel the remaining back to the donor. The donor could then claim a large charitable contribution on their taxes, though he or she had only put out a fraction of the claimed amount. The conspiracy began as early as 2010, resulting in tax losses to the IRS of at least $2 million. This is according to prosecutors. Goldstein is scheduled to be sentenced in October, and he faces a maximum of five years in prison, but he will likely not serve any time at all, partly because of his contributions to the community and the synagogue, but also because of his cooperation in the case. That event was a significant mitigating factor to the final plea agreement, but it is no excuse. We cannot look the other way because a perpetrator of a crime becomes suddenly a victim of a crime. Habada Poway issued a statement saying, in part, Rabbi Goldstein violated the law, contradicted what our synagogue stands for, and transgressed the very moral and ethical rules that the Torah has taught. One of Rabbi Goldstein's sons, Mendel Goldstein, has assumed leadership of the synagogue and its school last year. Now to the latest cases of coronavirus in San Diego County. Our positivity rate is up at 7% today. That is 539 new cases out of more than 7,200 tests. In total, there are 20,887 cases. 14 more San Diegans have died. That brings the total to 436 people. Three new outbreaks were reported today. One at a restaurant or bar, a place of worship, and another at a residence. And starting at midnight, hundreds of local businesses will have to shut down again. The governor's orders include places of worship, hair salons, and gyms. One local owner says he is not planning on following that order. I have to stand up for what I believe in. Since reopening last month, Boulevard Fitness owner Sean Gilbert says he has done everything asked of him to create a safe environment for his customers. He says he hasn't seen anything to indicate that gyms are at fault for the recent spike in COVID-19 cases, and he feels fitness is absolutely necessary for people's health and well-being. Well, I don't want to be a rebel. I truly believe we're essential. You can talk to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of gym members. It's essential. The owner has received some backlash online for his decision to stay open. He says he respects everybody's opinions, but will continue to fight. Today, we are hearing from more parents about the San Diego Unified School District's decision to continue school in the fall online. Many are now scrambling to figure out child care. So, you know, luckily I, need, I can rely on um, my in-laws and um, to watch them and help during school, and I guess that's I guess, you know, there, there's the benefit of that to where it is online, so they can have that grandparent time. Bronwyn Barunda says she recently lost her husband during the pandemic and is now having to deal with the challenges and logistics of single parenting. San Diego Unified officials said teachers will receive expanded training in online education to better meet the needs of the students. Another update will be given to parents on August 10th regarding more back to school plans. The Navy says it is making progress on a fire on USS Bonham Richard now burning in its third day. The Navy says that they have kept the fire away from fuel tanks on board. About 400 sailors are fighting two fires inside the amphibious assault ship. The Navy says it has not detected fuel in the water but is preparing just in case. Right now they're unsure if they can save the ship. All right, are we in store for another weekend warm up? Dagmar will have a heat trend headed our way right after a quick break. NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Bill Howe. We know how. We need a new AC. I don't think we can afford one. Well, I wish we knew how. Did someone say how? For a quality American-made air conditioner? You know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. We know how. 
Your Wednesday is shaping up to be a second day of cool down, which is great news. So we have seasonal and somewhat in some cases, maybe even slightly below seasonal norms, but kind of averaging out at seasonal. So very comfortable conditions considering it, it is July in San Diego. You're looking at the coast at about that mid to upper 70 mark, partly cloudy skies, inland valleys, you've got that mid 80 mark. Mountains, you're looking at the low 80s still and the desert still 107, 108. Again, these are seasonal norms across the county. So pretty decent July day in store for San Diego. Diego. Enjoy. If you plan to fly to the tri-state area, expect to be greeted by a team of health officers. Anybody who arrives in New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut from 22 states, including California, will have to fill out a travel document. Minnesota, New Mexico, Ohio, and Wisconsin were added to the list today. You will be asked for contact information, where you're coming from, and where you're going. If you refuse, you could face a $2,000 fine. JetBlue says it will continue social distancing measures on its flights until at least September. The airline says the middle seats on its larger jets and aisle seats on smaller planes will remain empty until after Labor Day. Delta, Southwest and Alaska are also leaving middle seats open right now. As everyone looks for activities to do in smaller groups this summer, boating has become pretty popular from coast to coast, but it's also an activity that can be dangerous if you are not familiar with the open waters. Officials say last year along the U.S. Coast Guard reported more than 4,000 recreational boating accidents. And this year, despite the pandemic, fatal boating accidents are up 19%. To keep you as safe as possible, experts suggest having a fire extinguisher, a sound signaling device, a marine radio, and life vests for each person on board at all times. Because God forbid somebody's thrown out of that water, you know what, you might be the strongest swimmer. You know what, that life, life vest is going to save your life. Experts say you should also leave an approximate plan of where you'll be sailing with somebody who is not going on the trip. You should also make sure your boat's engine has been checked for proper ventilation and that the weather will be nice enough to be out on the water. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Have a good night.